way he carried himself, he had that Michael Jordan mentality, and he was just a flat-out dog in the weight room, on the field, on the mound, and I just enjoyed being his teammate. The always entertaining Orlando Hudson joins me as we continue to celebrate Roy Halladay, his former teammate this week on Sportsnet. Bob Elliott, as you know, Orlando, is a Hall of Fame baseball writer, and he wrote a book called If These Walls Could Talk. And in the book, he asked Halliday what he thought of you. And Doc said this, quote, he's the best teammate I've ever had. And remember, I've been through the system twice. Did you know that's the way he felt about you? And why do you think he had such a connection with you? Well, first of all, you know, Mr. Mr. Elliott, I love Bob. He's, he's awesome. He's a, always been a fantastic writer. He's just yeah. a lovable person. He's great. It's the reason why he's a Hall of Famer. I wish more writers would, would have take his initiative and learn how to do some great things in the game. Mm. Um, to my man, Holiday, we came up together and I was with him when I first signed in 1998. And, you know, by myself being in the training room, getting some things done and him and Chris Copper in the training room, getting some things done. And, you know, I think our relationship grew then when I was talking trash to those guys saying, if I ever face you guys, if I ever get traded, one, vice versa, you know, I'm gonna wear you guys out. Um, <laughs> great conversations. and. You know, you look up the numbers. My numbers weren't too good off Doc. I neither uh, I neither uh, Carpenter, but uh, we had great conversations. And Doc knew that I was gonna bring it every day. Yes, I had a different vibe where I laugh and have fun, but stepping between the lines, it was about business. I loved the way Doc. I knew he loved me, but I didn't know it was that deep. You know, I knew he cared for me and loved me, but man, that's a that's a one hell of a compliment. Uh, I love the way Doc worked. I love what Doc stood for. He's a great family man. He took the game. And he just didn't play it. He dominated. And the way he worked every day, relentlessly, off-season, in-season, the week he had to pitch, the days after he pitched, the day of when he had to pitch, he studied the game. He, he knew hitters better than hitters knew himself. Mm -hmm. His work ethic was phenomenal. He was a great teammate back in the minor leagues. The long talks we had on the bus rides, the plane rides, the long talks. You know, and I knew right then, you know, I would do anything I could. If I was hurt, if I was banged up, whatever the case may be, that when Doc had to pitch, I had to be at second base. And I wanted to make every play for him. I hated when he gave up a hit because I knew it was like how, how, how mad it made him feel. But uh, he was just such a competitor. Uh, he's, uh, you know, watching the last dance of Michael Jordan, the greatest athlete, the greatest basketball player of all time. But some may argue differently back times before us. But watching Halliday and being in the clubhouse with him and being only two lockers away from him and the way he carried himself, he had that Michael Jordan mentality and he was just a flat out dog in the weight room, on the field, on the mound. And I just enjoyed being his teammate. And, and, and it's an honor to have been playing behind him. And it's an even bigger honor that God blessed me to be in his path to play behind him. Mm -hmm. for, um, yeah. I won my first gold glove behind Roy Halladay. Same lineup as a night ago, different pitcher. This time they'll face Roy Halladay. He said before he's six and two on the road this year. Four and three in his career against Tampa Bay. Hard hit and look at the play, Orlando Hudson. Oh my goodness. What a terrific stop. It's amazing what happens when you have your ace on the mound. All the fielders, all the defenders know that Roy Halladay is going to come out throwing strikes. I want to get back to the friendship angle here. The two of you, from the outset, anyways, you guys look like the odd couple, right? A pitcher, <laughs> a position player. He's kind of quiet. Uh, you're never at a loss for words. Uh, he <laughs> kept to himself a lot, and you're Mr. Social Butterfly. What yeah. did you guys have in common outside of baseball? Well, people don't realize, man, Doc had a great sense of humor. He had a great sense of humor. People don't realize that. Doc laughed and joked a lot. Uh, we, but Doc also loved fishing. And mm -hmm. by the country boy, I also love fishing. So we always talk about fishing and talking about boats. And, you know, my dad came in town. He always wanted to get into deer hunting. So we talked about those things, you know. And um, so we was able to build a relationship through our, 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 our love for nature also. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's always asked about different fishing spots and how things, how do we fish in South Carolina? What's this like? What's the deer hunt is like? Because he's a Colorado boy, but they ended up moving to Florida. So, you know, he was big into fishing. But, you know, we also spend our times now, don't forget, we spend our times in the locker, you know, talking about different things outside of nature. We talked about the game. Like, he asked me, like, well, what you thinking when you in the box are? 
you know, what you thinking when this hitter is at the plate, how you position yourself. So I, I asked him the same questions. If you was facing me at this point, Doc, what would you throw me in this certain situation? So we kind of fed off each other and we mm -hmm. can learn from each other. But obviously, he probably learned a lot more because he absolutely dominated, you know. And, you know, opposing hitters hated to face him. They, they, they didn't want to see Halliday. They would count the rotation, okay. Doc, if Doc pitched on Thursday, we got him for three days, that means, oh, we good. We missed Doc, so we good. You know? <laughs> That's the kind of the kind of thing, he, the effect he had on other teams and, Man, I tell you what, man, me and I had some great talks. And the day I got traded, the crazy thing is, the day I got traded, mm. I was on the way back from Atlanta, driving back to South Carolina, and Doc called me. He called me. No, I'm sorry. I was on back from Greenville, South Carolina. And Doc called me, and he was crying. I'm like, dude, what's going on, brother? Talk to me. He's like, man, I can't believe they made that move. And oh, about 45 wow. minutes on the way home, and it brought tears to my life. Doc, I'm not going nowhere but Arizona, brother. We still going to talk. We still going to mm. the boys. It's going, you know, it is, it's a business. It is what it is. He's like, oh, anybody else, brother, but not you, man. I'm like, Doc, it's a business, dog. It's, it's, out of me, it's out of me and you guys control, you know? So we, we had a chance to spend from 98 to 2005 together. Brother, it's all good. It's nothing but love, you know? It's not your fault. It's not my fault, you know? It's, it's something that JP saw better to fit for the Blue Jays and that, uh, that uh, Arizona saw fit to fit them and, and the trade made it, you know, it happened and, you know, it is what it is, brother. But there's no love loss. We always gonna talk, man. The, the love ain't the, the love ain't going nowhere. I'm just I just gonna be behind you making some plays. That's it. You guys were together in the minor leagues when you heard he was heading back to the minors. You were in Double A yes. Knoxville. Yes. When you heard that Roy Halladay was getting sent down, and the way you observed him in the minors, what did you learn about Doc? Oh, that's when the Doc took over. That's where the doc come in effect. Um, he already had the explosive fastball, had a good curveball. But when he came down to Merc, I think, I think it was Mel Queen, and I know Dave Stewart was. Mm -hmm. And they kind of changed the slot angle a little bit to get him down here to make that sinker more effective. <laughs> Look at him now, Hall of Famer. So coming down, riding those bus rides, and I'm saying when I get there, it won't be long before I, before I be there because I was a top prospect then. Mm -hmm. and Itself, when I get back, you gonna see a different dog. And sure enough, when he got back, he dominated. And when I got up, it is what it is. The history says itself. But um, he was determined. When he came down, he was definitely determined. He worked hard. He threw bullpens, threw a few games, throwing bullpens. He was getting that angle right, getting those fingers right on that ball for that sinker. And man, was it devastated. And, and he took off. His career took off from right then because his mindset was, when I get back, it's going to be a different me. I'm going to bring a different vibe to the clubhouse. And that's going to feed off me. And it's hard to feed off a pitcher because they don't throw every day. But right. Halliday had that vibe where you had to feed off him every day. Over your career, you played behind Randy Johnson, Clayton Kershaw, yes. uh, Brandon Webb. Yes. Where does Doc rank as far as the best one. pitcher? Number really? one. Okay. Number one. That's no disrespect to Brandon Webb. No disrespect to Randy, Dan Heron, Clayton. Mm, yeah. Just no disrespect to those guys. None at all. And I even said that around those guys. They respect that. Because they also themselves, especially Hall especially um, uh, Heron and Webb and Kershaw, they especially studied Doc. Because they were young bucks when, when Doc was already up there. So we were all young bucks still. So they liked what Doc did on the mound. Mm. Way himself how he dominated so they looked at the things he done and you can ask those guys right now they have took certain parts of doc game for themselves and all three guys had great careers and kershaw still going on so doc of course ranked number one of all pitchers i played behind um one of my best teammates one of my great friends lovable person he's just he he, he has a piece of me and when i went to arizona my teammates my manager bob melvin my trainers that they would tell you I talked about the Blue Jays and Roy Halladay every single day. <laughs> well, Orlando Hudson, thank you so much for the insight, for the stories. You will always be a Blue Jays fan always, favorite. Always, And we always look forward to seeing you around Rogers Center in the future. Definitely. Stay Definitely. safe, O-Dog. I will. Hazel, thanks for having me. Enjoy, always enjoy talking to you. You're one of the best. <laughs>